Okay, hello there and welcome, welcome. I hope the audio and the recording are just working fine. And today I want to show you a little bit about how I made this character design paper of my original character. Her name is Pika. I know in astrology terms, the pronunciation is like Spika, but for this character especially, her name pronunciation is Pika with double E, so not Spika. Okay, so this original character I made for my webcomic ideas which i don't know whether it'll really happen in the future or just you know an idea to build my portfolio i still don't know but what i want to show you today is how the simpli simplified process of how I made this character design sheet so i will avoid saying this word for a little bit because you know english is not my first language so i'm afraid that youtube will scan it as something else which is this so i think i will just say paper <laughs> character design paper for this character speaker okay disclaimer once again english is not my first language i will stutter a lot and my english is definitely heavily accented okay so if you want you can press c for the youtube automatic caption to help you i hope it can help you if you find me hard to understand and please bear with me okay now of course we always start with templating layouting and visualizing so the most important part in creating a character design paper actually there are only two huge huge and most important which is the full body right here and the close up to the face if you have that two fundamentals part i think you'll be fine but let's talk about my layouting for a little bit so i have the full body sketch on the left so that uh, the audience see it first and then i'll have two zoom in and close up face the first one is just a copy of the full body but zooming in the, on the face and the other one i redraw redraw so not just copying i draw from scr scratch and i make the head to look another way rather than the same angle as the full body photo and then I make just, you know, a little a little one, one more, preferably uh, having another facial expression and emotion and then preferably also looking at another, another direction. So we already have one looking at left, looking at right, and this one it's a little bit upward. And then this is optional, this three, the close up on the eyes which shows the details of the eyes not that my character have many details on their eyes but it's just fun to do the color palette color palette palette color palette i don't know which which one is the pronunciation and then this is the outer one so usually in webcomic uh, in some scenes usually the comedic relief or the simple scenes you have some kind of chibi the character to be chibi fight you know and this is where i put the chibi fight now my character is a normal human being she's not a monster she's not she's not you know a furry not that there's anything wrong with that but what i'm trying to say is if your character is like half monster of you or you know have another uh, form you have to draw it okay but for my normal human being character no this is enough and i leave left a space here so that i can write the character description which i already kind of did here on canva but for this video, I just want to talk about how the drawing process was made. Okay, and then from this layouting, I made the sketch. I will... Uh... Oh, okay. This is the sketch. So the sketch is super simple because uh, I have another sketch, but I just deleted it because it looks all the... But as you can see, the full body and then the standing position, the face right here. These two different heads have two different uh, face expression, which I say before, it's better to do that way. And then they are uh, looking at different direction from what the full body is. And this one I didn't sketch because, you know, it's only the copy of the full body and then zoom in. It's, it's just like that, okay? The chibi one is almost perfect because chibi for me is kind of easy to do. The eyes and then I at first plan to have only four color palettes here but as you can see it'll turn into two folds and after that come the most important part now too bad i 
don't uh, you know don't have the line art only part the line art only layer so <laughs> we, we will we will do this one by one as you can see i have so much folder here folder six and then inside folder six i have folder one so five and what just what's this so yeah each folders contains each section it's just that easy okay now i'll start with the simplest one the simplest one for me is this hat because it's small it doesn't even contain her clothing so let's see so this is fully colored and fully rendered and i'll show you how it was be before it was even colored or even rendered see i used the line art which art style is super thin line art because i was trying to give her that web comic and anime look you know rather than giving her a thick outline like aida iro's art style i give her a really 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 thin line here and then after that i do the base coloring for the hair and the skin once again this picture doesn't have any clothing it's cut on the neck so there are only two sections of the coloring and her eyes are closed so i don't have to color her eyes and then after that here comes the rendering so i'll show you a bit about how i render her skin and her hair also so i will just make another layer to show you how it was done hmm. so this is the base skin color she is a fair skinned woman and then this is the oh my god i pressed a wrong button And this color is for the shading so what i did <clears throat> was making a new layer above this base color here and then click on clipping layer so what that did is that uh, by clipping the layer my pen will only color inside this base color so it, it won't bleed everywhere so what I did was like this, for example, this is the shadow for her bangs, right, here as you can see. And then with blending, blending tools, I use the blend, not the blur or the fingertip, adjusting the size. I just kind of, you know, do it like this. And just blend it up and down and make sure that the hard shadow is can still be seen. Yeah. then this is for the for the nose no this is how i shade character now comes the hair which has a bit more parts than the skin this is the darker shadow this is the lighter shadow and this is the highlight so for my art style rather than only using a shadow that is darker color than the hair i also use a shadow and a gradient that are lighter than the base color of the hair now why is that so it it's just to give you a watercolor looks you know the process was almost identical to the skin it's just a different color let's see so base color first and then i shade the darker shadow and then blend it then with a lighter uh, gradient color I just, you know, do that and then blend in it's just a repeat process and lastly, this layer should be on top is the highlight it's really simple so, I'm not doing the step-by-step -step video, you know the my usual drawing process but, even though the steps are really simple in the end, you have to practice over and over to achieve the looks that you like. Just like me here, I personally love, love, really love how this turns out, but it takes hours and hours of trials and error. Okay, now for this picture, the process is pretty much the same, almost identical. The difference is that now she has clothes and her eyes are open and even her mouth is open too so there are more steps for me the eyes i don't even have to explain it it's the same so my art style is actually just you know this 
this is this explains my art style in a really really simple and fast way this is basically my coloring art style okay the outline are still really really thin to give you that soft web comic look and this is my shading this is my shading technique which is you know hard pen shading on the outside and only on the edges and make sure that you can still see the hard shadow here here and that is it that is uh Michon art art style for the eyes i only use airbrush rather than the pen and blending it just to give you a soft look here and then here comes the gb now the GB, I think I will change the outline to make it a little bit thicker but at the same time if the GB's line are super thick I think it will make the character paper design to focus too much on this GB you know now I want to make so what I was thinking is that, that I want to make the her line here to be thicker because with GB's a th super thin line like this is kind of meh you know but at the same time if i did if i do just that when the audience open this character paper their eyes will avert here first because the chibi will have a very thick line when you compare it to the other picture and the problem is the chibi part right here is not what i want the audience to be focusing on the most i want them to focus here so i'll just let the line just like as is okay oh uh, I forgot, I forgot to talk about layer, uh, layer per layer of this image. I will turn off all the rendered parts. And this is what I get at first. This is only the outline and the base color without shadows and without rendering or anything. As you can see, this picture is the definition of trust the process. After I turn on the shadow, the rendering one by one, now we finally get speaker. <laughs> Before it was an ab abom abomination. Oh god, I cannot even spell and pronounce abomination. So what I was trying to say is sure, when you do the line outline and then the base color, you already have the shape of the picture. What I'm trying to say. The picture will look like this it'll look just like your line art and base color if you want to change the shape the size this is where you change it but the quality the quality of the art itself is not shown it shown it's not shown yet only after you turn on the shadow and the re rendering layers only then you can see the quality of the art so what i'm trying to say is don't don't stop drawing even though it seems like the picture looks like shit just just trust the process but once again the overall shapes was determined was determined by the outline and then the base color so you can you can trust the process but you can hope for the shape to be changing just by you shading and adding some shadows no it it doesn't work like that you have to know when to adapt and when to change the shapes, the colors, and then the quality of the quality of the art. Okay, next one. Okay, we already talked about the GB. It's it's lit literally really simple. And then this is the zoom in. I won't talk about this because this is not a drawing. This is literally me just copying this picture. Now this, this is the final boss. So drawing face is one thing but drawing clothes are other different things so um i will just skip the face and the neck and the eyes because the fundamentals are already explained by these two pictures now i want to tell you a little bit about how i color her clothing because i don't know about you but i'm kind of proud of how i make these folds so i will i will show you a little bit what i did of what i did so for example, for example, with her pants right here, this is the base color of the pants, okay? And I'll take the darkest color here of the shadow, and then don't forget, new layer, 
and then clip to the layer below below so i'll just make a hypothetical hypothetical folds here for example here here so just imagine that this is a proper pants fold okay now this this looks like crap now how i turn this into this anyone has a guess <laughs> of course everyone has a guess it's the blending tool <laughs> with blending tool adjusting the brush brush size blend the edges but leave just a tiny tiny bit of here of this line here and then just don't don't just blend up and down but also pull it outwards a little bit like this and remember to just leave a small line like this yeah same goes for this one and i'll just do the same thing for the other uh, line here mm. and this is how i achieve this folding looks and i'm sure you guys can copy and follow it you know it looks much better than what it looks like one minute ago before i blend and there it is the fundamentals of how i shade folds and it only took one to two minutes maybe and it gave a pretty satisfying looks almost kind of semi-realistic but not really you can adjust uh, it in any way you like for example if you think the folds are like it's not anime enough it's too realistic you can add you can add some outline or something to the folds to make it looks like a bit more drawn rather than semi-realism you can adjust everything the same goes for her boots her shirts her t-shirt here and literally everything else and here you go after drawing how many one two three four four picture you already have a decent enough character design paper yeah i i didn't count here this picture and this picture because it's just a close-up of the other pictures then uh, i make this palette just by eye dropping the base color of this character little literally okay and there it is now this character paper is not complete why because it lacks the description now don't mind my description here it's kind of cringy you, this is you know just a brainstorm idea of the description so the problem is speaker here is a cynical and antagonistic character and when you want to make any character you want to make the character sheet to contain their most common facial expression no Spica is a hundred percent hundred percent mean and antagonistic character so why she keeps smiling well because these smiles are all literally her evil expression so to tell that to the audience you really need this description right here because if not at least until five minutes ago I'm sure all of us did th uh, things and thought that Spica is just a bubbly cheerful girl but with the description her character has so much depth depth I'm sorry her character has so much depth now the same goes for any other character even though Spica is definitely one character that you really need the description for but even straightforward character like Tao here still need some description to, to show you like what kind of character he is what about this expression you have here and so on and so forth now after you understand the fundamentals here comes the other concept art so I've been making this character illustration for a little bit now and this one too as you can see both both are really unfinished but what I was trying to do is to make this smiling speaker here and then the angry speaker here it, uh, not really angry but cynical speaker here you know, to show two sides of the same coin and with this concept illustration and this character design sheet you already made a story 
and your webcomic studio will understand in what to do and how to draw this character. And although I agree that this character sheet will need much more content, but if we talk about the fundamentals and what we really need first, the priority, I think this character sheet with close-ups, full body palettes and face with different kinds of different expression and looking at the different angle angles and the altered version, which is this GB right here and your concept art, I think with this two being ready to be served at the table, you are good to go for making your first concept character design sheet and that's it yay so <laughs> i'm contemplating on whether or not i should upload this because first i cannot speak english to save my life i stutter a lot and somehow it's really hard to pronounce some word and i've been learning english you know writing reading and grammar all my life and somehow to speak and tell story with it, it's it's really hard. And second, I think this video just sucks overall. But it was you'll see whether or not I'll upload it. Okay, for my five viewers. See you later. Bye.